you were sharing about uh, you know uh, how someone walked with you, you know, or discipled you, and how it helped you in your early days as believers, right? As a as a believer, so um, yeah, so that was very um, that was good to hear. So uh, today, as we move into small groups ministry, I you know, just want to try and understand like what kind of um, like a church setup, you know, was it uh, that you were part of or you are part of? And have you um, also, you know, been part of a, a life group or a small group which uh, meets uh, regularly for prayer, worship, and so on? So just wanted to hear, um, you know, uh, your, like your experience, your journey in that. So feel free to share, like, um, like what kind of a church is uh, you know are you part of maybe you can you know uh, just give a, a kind of small description about that uh, in the sense you know maybe it's uh, what denomination it is and uh, whether you know you have this midweek bible study or a small group or a you know, small group setting like few people getting together meeting what happens in that um, you know group setting have you found that to be useful, not useful, you know, your experience? So just wanted you to share that. Okay, so anyone, you know, you could. Um, anyone, so maybe Thomas, you'd like to start and then maybe Aaron, Dave, you guys can also share. Kiran, Prince, Kanan, Neelam, anyone. Uh, yes, Pastor. It's um, we yeah. gather as a small fellowship as a uh, members to learn and meditate the word. So a lot of benefit. Okay. Where uh, some people uh, they. Um. Sorry, Thomas. I couldn't hear the last part. Um. Yeah, we still can't hear. I think the probably the internet is a little signal is a little bad. Okay, we'll we'll come back to you. And anyone else? Till Thomas's signals get sorted. Signal gets sorted. Anyone else? Probably Dave or someone. Aaron, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, we have actually we have uh, three groups. Uh, okay. There's something like a sales group. Uh, one is yeah. from a church. And, okay. Uh, from the first one is uh, we have uh, more than 40, 40 and above uh, youths it's from okay. a church. So mm. we used to meet up once a month. And then that sec uh, second group is from uh, between a circle of friends. It's only mm. uh, five of us. Okay. But uh, we have, yeah, uh, twice a week we have uh, something like uh, we used to got like a prayer points and we pray for each other. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we used to have uh, sharing from the okay. uh, word of God. And the third group we have uh, like uh, from on a colony mm -hmm. so it's uh 20 of us more than 20 yeah 20 or 23 mm -hmm. of us but it's uh but uh only three or four of four of us we used to show up uh once oh. a month okay so, yeah Oh, nice. So, um, so there are three groups. So one group is uh, very big. It's like forty. Um, yeah. Then the other one is twenty. Uh, out of which only three or four come, but three people come, and both these groups meet uh, once a month. Okay, so it's more like a formal thing, right? But then the other group, which is uh, made up of friends, so there it's more regular. Even though it's five people, you meet regularly. Almost, yes. you said twice a week. You said right, or twice a month. Oh, yeah, that's twice a week. Twice a week. Okay, so that's um, yeah, very frequently, and then the sharing, the study, and uh, everything, prayer that happens. Right, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
so um so aaron like what is it like like which group do you look forward to <laughs> you know which groups meeting um, do you look forward to for me uh i find more comfortable with my uh circle of friends mm. because it's a uh, very easy for me to uh, share the word because oh, okay. even uh right after sharing the word they used to respond I see. Okay, yeah. okay. I feel more this is a, this is, okay. So these are friend circle and you you all worship in the same church or you're you, from you all attend different churches? Uh we we are we are from uh, different churches. From different churches, okay. Yeah. That's very nice. Okay. Right. And how long have you been meeting like this as friends? Uh, uh It's been uh 3 or 4 years now. Wow. Okay. Mm. So three or four years meeting regularly twice a week uh which means like in a year at least 52 into 2, right? So that will be 104. 104 four times you meet in a year into 4. So that's like many times, right? You've met in the you know in the last four years. Uh, you've prayed for each other you've probably shared struggles challenges you know happiness tears victories failures everything and uh, prayed with one another grown you know i'm sure you know uh, so you know each other's lives and and uh, you know a lot of things good things have happened right? right and i'm sure you know you must have experienced some misunderstandings some conflicts and also you know went through that journey through that as well so yeah so that's wonderful so when we when we look at you know discipleship it is uh, you know it's it's growing together uh, in following the lord right learning to follow the lord but it's in it is in a in a small group setting you know with the group of people so being a disciple is never a uh, is uh, you know when we look into the word we see that it's it's not a solo journey right it is always in community it's always with people it's at least one other person or two others right um like if you look at paul uh we see that yes uh, for him it was like we read about the time that he was 3 years after 3 years coming to meet um, peter after 17 years coming to be with the disciples but we see that uh, there was always these interaction with the other at least one other person like barnabas was there uh, and then um, and then we see you know, silas uh, titus timothy and all the other people and you know when we the team gets bigger and bigger you know is is doing ministry with the group of people and uh, this whole thing of journey of discipleship you know at least with one, one other person right so there's there's a lot of value in in making this discipleship journey or even journeying from uh, from being a believer disciple minister and leader you know with with a group right with a group of friends or with a group of people um, maybe it is people you know like Aaron was saying maybe it could be from you know people in as friends you know you just you you are you are friends you are you know each other uh, through various ways or means and then but you are that one purpose is there that we want to worship the lord we are gathering for this purpose or it could be people it could be people from church like it could be a a bit more formal structure where you know you the group could be small like maybe you know 5 6 10 12 whatever um but it's it's uh, you know maybe assigned by the church or the church or maybe it's uh, because everyone lives in that same area that colony uh, geographical territory it's it's easier for people to gather so you're gathering right so you have different kinds of groups maybe uh it's because of the same age it's because you know you all uh, the, the the group could be meeting because they are all you know same interests maybe uh but with one thing in common that that being the lord jesus and that being uh that that common thing being wanting to pursue the lord jesus or wanting to follow the lord jesus wanting to learn more about him his ways uh and sharpening one another and so on so uh so this we call as small groups ministry right uh there's a lot that happens 
in a small group setting. Okay, so we're going to take a look at uh, some of uh, what this small group ministry is, the advantages of it, um, and uh, when we look at it, we are going to look at uh, a slightly um, you know formal setting. No, it's not. It's not just an informal gathering of friends, but um, uh, it's it's a it's it's kind of a formal setting where uh, you're saying, okay, maybe you know, it, it's it's by the church. The church says, okay, uh, the church leadership is uh, you know uh, having this uh, in the church. Why the intention being that people that believers should grow. Okay, believers should grow together. Believers should grow from, uh, you know, being just believers. They should not be just believers, but they should be strong in the word, strong in the works of the spirit, and so on. So, um, you know, maybe it, it is just it, it is a vision of the church, right? So we are looking at um, a formal, uh, you know, a structure and what happens, you know, in in a small group ministry, right? So. Um, you know, if you have the other notes, I will also share the notes. So we're going to be looking at the, uh, the small groups ministry. Well, this, um, this, uh, uh, these notes because about uh, the small group ministry, and of course, in the light of uh, discipleship, right? So it, this has uh, three sections. Okay, uh, let me just share and. Uh, I think it's coming up. Yeah. Okay. So this has three sections. Like one is, uh, you know, uh, talking about a cell church. You know, what is a cell? Uh, uh, what is because when we look at, uh, we're going to look at that. A cell is a uh, smallest part of a body, right? You have organs and everything, and then it's made up of cells, or very small, tiny, microscopic, hardly visible. Uh, part right we call that as a cell and a, and a cell is functional it has so many things happening inside of it if you study right? um, it has the DNA it has mitochondria it has you know uh, things that produce uh, uh, proteins and so on so it, it it has so many things happening right it's very functional it's a lot of activity that's happening but together when each of these cells with all these things happening it causes growth of the body. Okay, so we're going to study the cell, uh, and and similarly, you know, the parallel is that a small group can be uh, such a powerful uh, engine for growth of the body. Right? If you look at the church, you know, we have small groups which are powerful, then that would bring about community, bring about um, spiritual growth. Uh, people doubts get clear. People grow spiritually, use their gifts, and so on. So all that can happen. And so we're going to look at that. Then the second section is how does one prepare to be a leader in this cell, in this small group? Okay. So we're going to use the term cell group or maybe, you know, uh, life group, but we will just use the term cell group, right? Okay. Uh, then the third section, a uh, second section is uh, preparing to be a cell leader. Okay. What, uh, what kind of skills, what kind of uh, skills do I need to develop? in order to be the leader of a life group. So this will be very useful, even if you are leading, like some of you are part of these small groups, some of you might be leading uh, these small groups. Now this could help, this could have a lot of uh, input to how I can be even more effective. Okay, what are some of those mistakes to avoid? Um, and uh, what are those challenges that we face in a small group kind of a setting uh, when I'm leading uh, or ministering to the small group? What are some challenges and how to overcome these challenges? And also uh, we look at, okay, how can I grow this group? I grow this group in the sense uh, uh, numerically well, to a certain point and also in terms of maturity, spiritually, you know, how can we grow this group so that the group doesn't feel stuck in any way. This, you know, everybody's growing personally and the group is also growing. Right. So we we'll look at that. The third section is about raising up disciples and then also raising up leaders, uh, reproducing leaders, meaning you know, you raise up leaders who can 
go ahead and raise up other leaders, right? Producing leaders, reproducing leaders, right? So we look at being spiritual fathers and mothers and also um, how the member of a group, small group, can become a leader. Right? So we look at some of those things like um, how to help them, how to identify, and how to um, how to help them, you know, find their place as leaders. Right. Okay. So let's go into uh, you know the vision for the small group ministry or a, or a vision for a cell church. Okay. So now uh, when we say cell church. We're saying now, you know, the church is gathering together, okay, but it has these small groups, functional small groups meeting all over maybe the city, but all people who are part of these groups are actually part of this church. Okay. Now this is a this is a good model for you know anyone who is probably starting a church. Right. You're planting a church, and right from day one, you can have this model so that you know church church grows in this way. So, um, well, so that's something that's a big picture, right? Each group or each cell uh, it has members. Uh, we're going to talk about you know how many will be effective, uh, how not to have too many people, so that. You know, if there are too many people, how they can be part of another cell group. Um, so we have these groups, and they are all part or connected to the vision of, you know, the the church. You know, all these people make up the local church that they are part of. Okay, so uh, so that's the thing. So a cell church, a cell church. When we say you know a church, which see now you can have. Uh, you can have prayer meetings, right? We can have, um, let's say, what do you call, um, you know, prayer meetings at homes, okay? And and well, different kinds of people could come. Uh, you could have, and typically, a prayer meeting would be like it. It can be like a mini church service, actually, right? You can call it like cottage prayer meetings or uh, you know, uh, house prayer meeting. And these have its, you know, it, it has its purpose. It has its function. Uh, maybe uh, believers in that area are gathered together. There's somebody who leads worship. There's somebody who preaches. And then people are being prayed for. And then they go back. And, you know, it has its purpose in encouraging people spiritually, uh, you know, lighting a fire in people's lives and uh, people being blessed, being ministered to, and so on. Like maybe they are meeting once a week. Uh, four times, uh, twice a month, whatever. Right now, that's now what we are going to see is that that is not what we are talking about when we say a small group or a cell group. Okay. Now, that is not what we are talking about. Okay, so what is a cell? Okay, when we say cell, um, it is a small group of people. Maybe you know one leader or a one leader couple with six other you know, uh, cu couples, right? If you're saying, uh, if six other married couples, or it could be, you know, if it's a single person, one leader with 12 others, okay? Now the 12, of course, is, uh, we, we'll come to that, the number. Now when you say, okay, we are calling this as a cell group, okay? It's a small part, a small unit, just like how a cell is a small unit in a physical body, calling it a cell. Now, now the thing is that uh, it's it's part of the bigger body of what we're calling as the church, a small unit, which is part of the church. So it's not something that is not part of the church. Okay, that's very uh, important for us to understand. Now the cell group is part of the church; it's connected to the vision of the church, right? Submitted to the leader uh, leadership of the church. So it's not functioning as something that I, I'm doing. You know, I'm somewhere. I'm doing my own thing. It's part of the church. Okay. Um, it's part of the kingdom of God, right? It's part of the church. Now, when you look at what happens in a cell group, um, it is not just a Bible study. 
it is not just a prayer meeting it's not just a church service okay so which means that uh, you know it's not like the people are gathering together to study the book of daniel and after that they'll study some other book uh, it could have you know like typically in such a bible study you could have people from you know like different churches different uh, uh, denominations you know, gathering together oh somebody is having a bible study so we let's go there so this when we when we are talking about small groups ministry and cell groups you know the thing is okay you know there's nothing wrong in that no we're not saying that at all okay now, specifically when we say small group ministry in a local church we're talking about the difference okay why is it that we uh, you know we we need to look at the difference okay we'll understand that so now it is because it is not just a bible study it's not just a prayer meeting where people are gathering and praying and so on um and it's definitely not a church service where we are you know meeting together and having another service right apart from the one which we are meeting as a bigger group on sundays it's not just another service now what is it then now we we need to understand that this cell group is part of a disciple making is part of a discipleship process okay so which means the people in the cell group are part of the of the process of being made disciples followers of the lord and and then from there going on to be ministers and leaders so it's a discipleship making or discipleship process uh, uh of the of the church okay so a cell group so in every, every cell group you know people can be well people can join uh our people who are saved can be part of it you know they, they receive prayer they are ministry healing deliverance everything okay well does the, the is there a bible study that happens in a life cell group yes okay but the cell group itself is not a just a bible study we need to it goes beyond that it is discipleship that happens in a cell group okay so uh, we're going to learn more about that okay what happens now it is a biblical pattern because we see that people met in the houses they used to meet in the temple and they used to meet in a smaller setting as well okay like the early church acts chapter 2 we see and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple they ceased not to teach and preach jesus christ in in and sorry uh, i'm sorry they Uh, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart okay that's acts chapter 2 verse 46 5 and verse 42 and daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach jesus christ so uh, let's just look at these two verses so it it talks about how they met with one accord with one of heart and mind in the temple it was a bigger setting and how they met in different houses right so what do they do they had communion they they had teaching right preaching and teaching so we we see this so they were meeting they were meeting in the bigger setting they were meeting in smaller settings as well right then we see acts chapter 20 uh and verse 20 it says how i kept back nothing that was profitable unto you so um Uh, so this um, acts chapter 20 you know we uh, read about paul and uh, so he's saying that i kept back nothing that was profitable to you and i've shown you and i've taught you publicly and from house to house so taught something in publicly bigger setting you know be, more people uh, public setting and also from house to house okay so paul also towards the end of his life he taught he was in a his hired house and he and he preached and he taught like several examples that we see uh, the church meeting in the house uh, and so on okay so when we say a cell group or a cell church movement now 
there's a lot of importance on the cell group, on the small group itself. Okay, now, you know, we understand that we will see that there is, a, you know, there are churches which have the cell group as a, as a cell church model. Okay, cell churches. So cell group is not uh, just a, another ministry, but the whole uh, functioning of the church itself is modeled on being a cell church. Okay, uh, and there's a cell church movement that we're going to uh, learn just in a bit. Okay, so which means that the cell group meeting is very important, um, just as a Sunday meeting. Right? So meeting in the cell group, uh, they, the, the, the church considers that to be very very important, as well as the Sunday, as much as Sunday meetings. Okay? So why do we have these cell groups? Why these small groups? Okay, when we look at that, we see that the cell church, or you know, when you have these small groups, it is very efficient in evangelism. Very, very efficient in evangelism in the sense like people might uh, feel hesitant to maybe come to a church service, but they may may not feel they may not hesitate, or they won't hesitate to come to a house, right? to meet casually so it's a it's a, it's a good uh, it's a good method for reaching unbelievers right? maybe there is a you know the only thing is that we need to do it right do it well maybe there's a occasion like maybe you know christmas or maybe there's an uh, you know there's a celebration like a birthday or something and then people do not feel hesitant to come to another house of course now with the pandemic and everything it's a it's a different thing but you know normally right you do not hesitate to come visit uh, another uh, person's house so it's it's very effective for evangelism it's also effective for discipleship right for for enabling believers for training believers you know it's a it's a smaller setting you know, you just uh, typically you, you know, you think about it like when you think of a Sunday service, right? Um, most of the things happens one way, most of the times, right? Um, Sunday service is very important. We are told in Hebrews ten not to give up this whole thing of assembling together, right? Whether we do it virtually or whatever, you know, we are gathering together. Um, so it's very, it's scriptural, it's important. Uh, there's something that happens uh, that God God does among us when we gather together corporately as a body to worship him, you know, to pray, to receive his word and so on. God does something in our hearts. Um, and of course, he enables us to do something, you know, to serve others in that setting. Now, just as something like that is important, you know, in a small group, when we meet as believers, uh, we're able to do something which is which cannot happen in a big setting, in a large setting. Right? Let's say a group of hundred people, two hundred people, you know, whatever. Now, in a smaller setting, uh, some things can happen. Like people can ask questions, uh, and then those questions can be answered. You know, that cannot happen in a bigger setting. Maybe people are saying, you know, yeah, I've never understood this. I, I know we, uh, you've taught about this, but I've never understood this. So can you just help me? Right. So you have that opportunity to ask questions, to clear doubts. So what happens is the learning is even more uh, in depth. Right. So you're not going ahead with, uh, you know, so somebody you know who's clarifying, or it could be you know uh, a thing like you know I'm struggling in this. You know, I know this to be the truth, but I'm struggling in this area. And there's someone else, um, you know, and you have the, uh, you you know that, okay, you won't, you will not be ridiculed. You will not be made fun of. Uh, it's a small setting and you know one another and respect one another. Right? So in a smaller setting, you're sharing that, okay, I have this challenge. I have this problem. Uh, can someone who has, uh, you know, understood and understood the spiritual truth or, you know, you have overcome this, you know, this thing, uh, how can you help? So someone shares and saying, okay, yeah, um, this is what the word of God says. And this is how I applied it. 
and this is how I overcame. Okay, so maybe it could be something to do with strongholds, something something to do with um, you know attitudes, more whatever. So that happens, you know. The, so the even the ministering or receiving ministry, um, you know, uh, dealing with strongholds, um, learning, uh, everything becomes a little more in depth. Okay, it it goes deeper than in a bigger setting. Now, bigger setting we receive, uh, and it, we we can you know in a smaller setting we we can question, discuss, um, you know, ask, receive, and then the learning becomes even more stronger. The truth that was heard on a Sunday morning. When we discuss that in a smaller setting, when we quest, ask questions, when people help each other, it becomes even deeper, deeply entrenched in a believer. Right? So um, it's it's a very uh, effective process for uh, for discipleship, right? For pastoring believers for discipling others. So uh, then the other thing also is that. Uh, Everybody is involved now. The families get involved, right? Um, the husband, wife, um, maybe there are children, and everybody, you know, as people meet in the home as a small group, uh, the families, um, what is happening is that they are also giving, okay? They are not just a consumer receiving, like every Sunday, just receiving. Okay, what is pastor speaking today? Okay, I heard it and I made notes. I went home. Um, but they are also giving in the sense, okay, this is what I learned. This is what I, you know, I'm putting in my life. This is how it can be useful. So they're also uh, giving. They're not just receiving, right? They're just giving. So when, when believers start to do that, they are learning, they're becoming stronger, right? And they are helping one another. So they are in, in fact, in ministry. Okay, ministry is just serving. Ministry is not about going behind a pulpit all the time. It's not just that. Right? They, are, they begin to serve one another. They begin to help one another become stronger spiritually. They begin to answer each other's questions based on what they have learned and what they have put to practice in their lives. And so, you know, as families, people are growing together. And uh, so that happens. So the family being recaptured, and uh, there is increase happening in the church. Okay, so there's increase, meaning people's lives are becoming more fruitful. People's, uh, you know, increase happening. The, the more cell groups you have, uh, the more people who are connected to the church, the more people are being saved, who are you know being plugged in. Who are connected to the church, the more people are being discipled. So the church is becoming stronger spiritually. The church is also becoming stronger or increasing, uh, not just in maturity and spirituality, but also increasing in in growth, growing in numbers. Right? So, um, so that happens. Well, like we said, discipleship that happens. Um, you know, very effectively in the in the small group. Just one second, please. I'm just reducing the size. Okay. Okay. So, um, to make disciples is to live the life of the mentor before you. You know, before the one who's uh, who's mentoring you. So that takes place. Then there is fellowship. There is edification. Okay, so I'm, I'm sure you. I don't know if you've uh, experienced that. You know, in a in a larger setting, you go, you attend, and sometimes you might know people, you may not know people. Okay, uh, certain churches are so large, like it's a wonderful service. Like you've uh, you know have a wonderful time of worship. You've had a wonderful time of you know uh, the word being ministered, praying, everything. Uh, but in terms of fellowship, there's not much. Okay, maybe. Uh, you know, you don't get to meet people, or you've not met people, right? Uh, so you finish church, and then you just go. Okay, you attend church, and you go. But whereas when you have a small group, 
you are part of a small group or you you attended church sunday but in the small group you know these people okay who are also you know attending church on sunday so so not only does it help in the fellowship but also it helps in you know edifying one another like emotionally spiritually you are you are being edified you are being strengthened um you know but uh, so what happens is you know this same group might meet on sundays also in church so you you recognize another person say okay uh, we we go to the same cell group you you know you meet and you talk and you get to know you become friends so all that happens right? so the fellowship uh, grows um and then you 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 begin to grow in friendship you begin to grow in fellowship uh, and also you begin to grow in you know maturity spiritually right so edification happens it also helps in exercising spiritual gifts now this is another very important thing right now when we when we learned in 1 corinthians 12 onwards 12 13 14 we saw that paul writing to the church and saying concerning spiritual gifts i don't want you to be ignorant okay so and then you are taught about the spiritual gifts now the reason you are taught about spiritual gifts is so that we might learn to use them use them for what for the edification of the church edification of the believers right so to be a blessing to the believers now every spiritual gifts you know we are called to exercise or walk in now the opportunity to use a spiritual gift may be very less in a you know a big church setting like in a church setting i should say the opportunity to use that okay so sometimes the pastor might say okay why don't you pray for the person next to you release a prophetic word uh, or you know maybe uh, you pray in tongues and you know if there's an interpretation share that or uh, or you know such things you know pray for healing lay hands on them pray pray for the person next to you to your left to your right whatever you know that might happen in a church setting okay but uh, but every time the cell group meets you know you can actually exercise the spiritual gifts the cell group can meet and and it's a small group it could be six people it could be a you know maximum of 12 or 15 you know uh, so that there is meaningful interaction there is meaningful discussion there is meaningful you know all these questions and everything you know, there is possibility of all this happening right so uh, so let's say in a small group then what would happen is that there is an opportunity to use these spiritual gifts develop these spiritual gifts uh, make mistakes and learn from the mistakes you know i remember that when we used to um, meet in a small group in our home uh like when when we first you know in church when we first started cell groups okay we called them cell groups and then later we, now we call them life groups um so when we you know when we first started we remember going over this teaching understanding it and we used to meet uh, you know in a, in our home right so when we when we met in our home uh we used to meet every i think every alternate week you know every, once in two weeks we used to meet and uh, we used to have people in different kinds of uh, levels of maturity okay so new believers experienced believers etc so there was i don't know there was one uh, believer who um, you know who was very shy about praying in public okay so we used to have this notebook write down the prayer points and pass on the notebook so every time the prayer points would come to this person uh, you know he would uh, he would say pass and then as on the notebook to the other person so he would never uh, pray right, in public okay but what happened is over time right he grew in the lord he came to a place of maybe you know praying those simple prayers um in public and and then started growing in in the gifts of the spirit and you know in a small group setting it's less well it's how you look at it it's 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 less intimidating right especially when you're with friends and when there's a you know when you're encouraging one another uh, it's not like you know being in a big group and prophesying right so it's less intimidating when you're praying together when you're prophesying over one another learning you know from uh, these spiritual gifts learning to use these spiritual gifts so um so 
I, I remember this person also started taking those steps with uh, recognizing these gifts, how to use them, learning to use them, and started really growing sharper and sharper in the prophetic. Right? So all this happened in, in a small group setting. Right? Understanding the word, uh, you know, being able to ask questions, receiving answers, all that is, is very effective uh, in a small group. So you know, exercising of spiritual gifts. In the cell group, also raising up leaders. Okay. It's uh, so you get to know the person, you get to uh, speak into the into their lives, and uh, you know you see the leadership potential, and you're able to raise them up as leaders, like give opportunities, uh, raise them up, you know, so that they become confident, and they're able to lead others also, serve others, minister to others also. Right? So, raising up leaders. Uh, there is accountability. Okay, so in a cell group, uh, your accountability to share the gospel, accountability to grow spiritually. So let's say the, you know, we, the, as a group, we are saying, okay, you know, this week we will we will come prepared, right? We will uh, not only you know uh, in, in maybe in certain things we are saying, okay, we are, we're going to come prepared. We're going to learn this, you know, thing together. So we are going to study this book. So we're going to study these chapters and then come, right? Uh, this is what we're going to be discussing. So, uh, so there is accountability. Okay, I I better learn and go. I better study and go, right? So the person is going to be asking me, and we have I have agreed. So so there is that mutual accountability. Okay, uh, that happens uh, in a in a life group. So you know, uh, look, or maybe the. Uh, life group leader and the life group itself decides to share the gospel with one person during the week. Okay, it could be a neighbor, it could be someone at work. So, you know, you 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 take that on, right? You you decide. Okay, we're going to pray. We're going to ask God for a divine appointment, and we're going to share the gospel with one person during the week. So, you know, we're talking about you know, you just imagine the scene. You hear these new new believers and. And, and then you do that together. So there is accountability, okay, uh, with one another, and also you know living a pure life, right? living a holy life. We are saying, okay, uh, you know, we're going to be careful about what we look at, you know, when it comes to social media, when it comes to TV programs, when it comes to things on the internet. Uh, we're going to be careful. We're going to be. Uh, we're going to be avoiding worthless things, like the psalmist says. You know, set nothing worthless before my eyes. So, uh, so there is this mutual accountability. So, in the next life group meeting, you're meeting and you're sitting together, and then uh, you know maybe someone asks a question. Okay, so how was your week? You know, where, where did you? How was your uh, time on the internet? How was the time on social media? You know, um, well. Did you spend it right? right? There is this accountability. Well, if if somebody slipped, somebody's fallen, they can say, "Yeah, I confess that uh, it didn't go too well. I should not have done this." But then there's repentance and a getting back and uh, becoming stronger, right? And and again, you 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 have that accountability, and so. Accountability to one another, accountability to God, and uh, you know, uh, so this whole thing of accountability happens in uh, cell groups. Okay, um, right. So, what is a, a, okay? Avoid continuing dead programs. Uh, that's another aspect of uh, you know cell group ministry. So, what does a cell group, cell church look like? Okay, when we say uh, this is a church which has a vision. Uh, for a cell uh, or cell group movement, or this is a church which is uh, following a cell group model. Okay, um, so what does a, such a church look like? Okay, it's not a church which is just running programs or meeting only on Sundays. So what does a cell church look like? Okay, so a cell church would have Sunday celebration services where everyone comes, and uh, you know everyone is having that one vision, is in sync with that vision, uh, is moving in that direction. So all that happens. Cell, uh, and uh, during the week, maybe once a week or once in two weeks, 
the church is meeting in life groups okay now that's the that that's a vision of a typical cell church where all the members who are in church are part of some cell group just imagine that let's say if there are let's say 120 people in church now all this 120 are part of some cell group maybe let's say there are 10 cell groups okay for the the church is having 10 cell groups and all the 120 are part of some cell group so there are maybe you know 10 cell groups and 12 in each cell group I'm just talking about you know just for example so everybody is part of a cell group ideal situation right so uh, so that is what it would look like that everybody is part of a cell group they are meeting in church on sunday they are meeting in live groups during the week and um, uh, so all these things are happening strong relationships strong sense of community um, a, a person is feeling cared for there's no question of you know i went to church nobody spoke to me and uh, you know uh, i i feel rejected all those things go away because you're meeting in a cell group you're meeting with 11 other people right or 12 other people you're meeting there so you get to know you are not uh, you know you're you have conversations meaningful conversations so you don't feel alone uh, when you're part of a church right so strong relationships everyone feels cared as feels cared for sorry not scared cared for where <clears throat> if there is a need then immediately the cell group comes to know right if there is a challenge if there is let's say some sickness some you know somebody passing away uh somebody hospitalized or uh, some financial you know challenges or some something happening uh or you know some challenges for the individual or for the family then the cell group rallies around gets to know prays provides helps okay so this would happen in a cell group so imagine if uh, all the people <coughs> now again this is an ideal situation like right? it does not always happen but let's say if all or most of the people are plugged into some cell group or the other then they would feel cared for their needs when it comes to you know relational uh, spiritual right, emotional needs the need for fellowship the need for you know caring for others and and being cared for everything is met right um so you can be part of the biggest church or you know maybe there are thousands of people in the church on a sunday but then you would still feel part of the church because you're part of the cell group right so when the cell group ministry or the small group ministry is done well is done right manner is done in the right manner then you would feel connected you feel, and all these things happen relationships are built there's a sense of community uh, the needs are taken care of all that happens well right okay uh, one more thing and then we'll stop okay um, so, so ministry is done through the cell group the cell you know the cell group can go out and do ministry maybe the cell group itself can go on a mission trip the cell group itself can take care of okay we're going to have some prayer walk uh, in the neighborhood the cell group can decide to do uh, and uh, prayer walk and street evangelism or the cell group can decide to do so many things okay we're going to clean up the neighborhood um, you know we're going to take care of this uh, need in the neighborhood maybe there's uh, you know some kind of uh, this crime that is happening we're going to keep a watch and inform uh, the police and so many things right uh, the cell group can actually do to reach out to the community to evangelize to share the gospel um, to minister okay so we'll we'll stop here so uh, you, you you know feel free to read through the notes and uh, and uh, yeah so next class we will we will look at some more we will focus on uh, the cell group ministry okay okay we'll stop here thank you we'll meet next week
Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Right. Bye bye. See you. Yes, See you. Bye.